Hey internet! Today I'm in an undisclosed location in the East Bay of the San Francisco Bay Area and I am here checking out an art installation slash tiny home compound that is informally called Containertopia. It involves people working on shipping containers and preparing them for residential living. For the record, I myself am also very interested in potentially at some point in the future living in a shipping container as I'm a pretty low maintenance person and as far as affordability goes, is on the low end and you can make them very sustainable, which is also really cool. This is our container construction workshop. Myself and several of my friends are experimenting with different ways to build tiny homes, many but not all out of containers. And yeah, this is kind of where we do a lot of our work. It's about 20,000 square feet. We call it a 24 seven art space. So basically it's for people who want somewhere where they can work on art or building other things um, 24 seven. And that's surprisingly hard to find. It's not even like that it's expensive, it's that you can't even find places like that anymore in the near East Bay anyways. And this is my newest one that I'm working on. One of the things I have to keep reminding myself is that these are so small, you can use what would otherwise be inaccessibly expensive materials. It's like if I was gonna put a tin ceiling on a normal American house, that would set me back like $8,000 or so. so. This has bamboo floors, wood paneling on the walls. This is just like open space in the middle. I had a couch here for a while, but it takes up too much space. So I'll either custom make a smaller one or just leave it open flex space. This works as you know the bed and the standing desk. There'll be a screen that goes in here with a you know, button you press to raise and lower it. Projector will mount here high enough that it's out of the way. And then um, basically this line up to the edge of the window it's gonna be a very small bathroom. And then to this side of it, up to the door, will be the kitchen area. This one will probably work off of a tank-based system, similar to an RV. This one I'm going all electric as an experiment. Previous ones used propane for space heating um, and for the on-demand water heater. Basically, like, that's one of, the water is one of the weird ones where it's so cheap to get grid-connected water that it's tempting to just go that route, but I want it to be a little more visible how much water you use. So I'll have like a tank that I have to manually fill every you know, 200 gallons or something. So like at least once a month, I have to at least be a little conscious of it. This one will also have a kilowatt array of solar panels on the top. And that's more than enough power to run. We'll see, that'll be stretching it with heating, but um, this one's better insulated than the last one. So I think that should be just about the right amount to have it off grid. Um, and then, Everything I do with hybrid systems, so you can plug it into the grid if you have it or want to, and then just disconnect whenever you want. All told, it'll cost under $10,000 in parts to build, um, and around 100 to 150 hours, so. I'd ideally want to get like 28 or so for something like this, which, you know. It's pretty good. It's about the cost of the average American kitchen renovation a week to two weeks. We're kind of planning a land, sea, and air version of these where with the same basic container, you can have different modules that attach to it. For land, that'll be you know wheels that just snap on to make it a relatively affordable trailer so you can just roll down to wherever with it. Um, and then for sea, we're exploring some barge-based solutions. Um, and for air, we are going to start stacking them very soon. So for example, the one over there will be stacked with another perpendicular to it, and then we'll do a T-shape over here, where the bottom one will run right here, and then centered on the top will be a second one sticking out. Stacking gets interesting, but like I've dropped these from you know a couple inches to a foot or two on my old one from when I was forklifting them, and they're fine. They're meant to be stacked. I mean, you can see the tear rating on them. So they're meant to be, this is the capacity per. So you can put 67,000 pounds total. So 62,310 pounds in these per container. And then when they're loaded to that intensity, they still get stacked like eight high on ships at sea in hurricanes. Right. So like these aren't going anywhere. Um, I'd worry more about surrounding buildings than, than containers. You can get a microwave dish. There's a couple different companies, um, Etherix, one of them. I forget the name of the other one. That'll just let you buy like in 100 megabit chunks 
space on a link, you just point a microwave dish, you can move it too. So like we relocated from somewhere else to here, we just move our microwave internet dish with us. It's really cool. I'm still super stoked about, you know, maybe thinking about getting a shipping container and living in it. This is something I would totally do. I was thinking about it in terms of cost, you know, um, I don't know how much you spend on rent, but in a major metropolitan coastal area of the United States, most people spend upwards of $20,000 a year just on rent. And if you took a year's worth of rent and bought one of these things, you could live rent free for a really long time. And that really appeals to me. Let me know what you thought in the comments. I hope you like this. See you next time. Did you think that was funny or interesting? Do you like cats? Bitcoin? Nerdy fun stuff? All these things and more are gonna be featured on this channel this year. More robot cats, some scripted stuff, and I might even get a drone. So keep watching and subscribe.